thank you mr chairman sir uh, dear audience thank you very much scp india chapter for inviting me to talk on this topic in your, this august gathering assalamu uh, alaikum and very good afternoon to you all uh, this is the institute where i work uh, I will try to present something on the introduction of lupus nephritis, especially the management and how the evidences are generated. And I do not have any uh, conflict of interest other than I received investigator's fee for phase two lupus nephritis trial. Uh, you all know that uh, SLE is a chronic inflammatory disease any organ of the body it can affect, especially the major organ like kidney, and also it can affect the brain, and also it can affect the cardiovascular system, the myocardium. SLE is more prevalent, you all know, in women. Male to female ratio, especially on an average, is nine is to one, but it varies from race and from uh, epidemiological regions to regions. The prevalence of SLE and uh, chances of developing lupus nephritis varies considerably a bit in different regions of the world. Like in, in Bangladesh uh, settings, uh, here it is 40%, 40% of the lupus patients, they usually develop, but it varies from 40, uh, 30 to 70% or in some uh, areas, it may be up to 80%. So these are the clinical manifestations of lupus nephritis. You all know the proteinuria, nephrotic grains proteinuria, or nephritic proteinuria, microscopic hematuria, and all leads to the clinical development of edema and also the generalized, uh, the anasarca. And also hypertension, lipid abnormalities, these are the some important uh, clinical features. This is the uh, uh, histological classifications that has been proposed by Society of Nephrology, International Society of Nephrology and Renal Pathology Society. And this is the gold standard of classification of lupus nephritis starting from class one to class six. But the important is class three, four, and five. These three classes are very important and to be treated very aggressively. So in my presentation, I will be trying to concentrate on three, four, and five uh, classes of this uh, lupus nephritis. You all know treatment of lupus as a whole was a very gloomy during the last century. But with the advent of prednisolone, the, the, the uh, potent anti-inflammatory drugs, it has shown some light after 1950s. So I'll be trying to uh, say something on the anti-inflammatory treatment and immunosuppressive treatment. But the other treatments like immune, uh, other than uh, which, which is called non-immunosuppressive uh, treatment, the aggressive antihypertensive treatment is needed in most of the patients. Antiproteinuric therapy is important, especially ACEI or uh, ARBs, and lipid lowering therapies. And above all, the base of treatment of lupus patient is hydroxychloroquine. Principles of immunosuppressive treatment, induction of remission and maintenance of therapy. The induction period is varies usually from three months to six months, but in some cases it may be extended. And maintenance treatment, I will be telling something on this later on my presentations. Indication, I have already told that only class three, four, or combination of class three plus five, class four plus five, or pure class five, these uh, classes are indicated in immunosuppressive and anti-inflammatory therapies. The goal is uh, resolution of inflammation and also immunological activity with the achievement of complete remission. Complete remission sometimes is not possible. Sometimes partial uh, remission is also satisfactory. 
So corticosteroid, I have already uh, told that uh, after 1950s, the invention of corticosteroid has put tremendous light on the management of uh, lupus patient, lupus, especially lupus nephritis patient. The dilemma was low dose or the high dose. And again, the pulse corticosteroids, the pulse therapy gave the tremendous benefit and renal protection, and it was published in 1976. Some are the historical development of corticosteroids. So pulse methylprednisolone has become the uh, standard of treatment, initiation with three pulses, usually 500 milligram to one gram uh, daily for three days, followed by uh, reduction of treatment, oral uh, uh, prednisolone, that is six, uh, one milligram per uh, kg per day. But subsequently, there are some literature, those being proposed that it should be 0.5 milligram per kg per day and gradually reducing to, to a maintenance dose. So next is immunosuppressive drugs. These are the immunosuppressive drugs, the intravenous cyclophosphamide, azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetil, some of the calcineurin inhibitors. There are three calcineurin inhibitors are nowadays using with some promise in lupus nephritis patients and rituximab, the monoclonal antibody which is directed against B lymphocytes. So the history of treating this lupus nephritis patient, if we see, uh, if we go back to, uh, it was a study that is published in 1978. It has been shown that the only, only the prednisolone and the prednisolone plus cyclophosphamide uh, gave a better result in the prevention of uh, or the stable renal course of the disease. Uh, this is the NIH trial. There are a series of trials uh, under the headline of NIH, National Institute of Health. It was sponsored by National Institute of Health of USA. And it has been shown that IV cyclophosphamide is very active and is very important in, uh, uh, in giving the induction of remission of lupus nephritis. There are so many trials, I'm not going into the details. Again, this is also one of the NIH trial, the combination of cyclophosphamide and methylprednisolone, given the best results. Uh, now comes the, some of the important adverse events of cyclophosphamide, the IV high-dose cyclophosphamide, especially the uh, cell count redu uh, reduction the agranulocytosis, and also in case of young female in the reproductive age, the ovarian function failure. There is a tremendous uh, 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 debate on the use of these NIH doses of cyclophosphamide in young female patients. So the lower doses of cyclophosphamide, whether it acts, whether it can be as effective as higher doses. So the European lupus nephritis trial came up and it has been shown that the higher doses and the lower doses are almost similar. So, so the, the, the lower doses nowadays is being practiced in most of the situations, not those of the NIH doses. Next, but still there are some side effects like alopecia and also ovarian failures are still there. So mycophenolate mofetil uh, came into play whether it can be as a replacement of IV cyclophosphamide. Yes, it has shown some promising result in some of the trials, and among those, ALMS trial is the pioneer trial, which show, has shown that the, the, the efficacy is almost uh, similar in the high-dose variety uh, group and also the low, uh, uh, the uh, mycophenolate mofetil and low-dose intra venous cyclophosphamide. So both groups are similar. So mycophenolate mofetil came into play for the treatment of lupus nephritis. So choosing between these two drugs, sometimes it's very difficult. How to choose? Because in our setting, the patient has to buy the drugs from their out-of-pocket. 
so MMF is a very costly drug. On the other hand, cyclophosphamide is a very cheaper drug relative to the mycophenolate morphetil. But the other issue is ovarian failure. So we have to choose among these two drugs very carefully depending on the situation. At the same time, in 2018, the Cochrane meta-analysis showed that both the drugs are equally effective. So, so uh, till 2018, they have, it's a very busy slide, I'm not requesting you to go, but you see the middle point, middle point. The terminal effect is, 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 is not going to any of the sites, neither to the MMF site, nor to the IV cyclophosphamide site. So, both are equally effective. Uh, if we see its renal outcome, renal outcome is almost same. You see it is on the middle. And if we see the ovarian failure function of, uh, among this group, yes, it, is, it, it appears to be better with uh, this ovarian failure is less with MMF, but this less is not statistically significant. So you can choose both of the drugs. So the initial preferred therapy is either glucocorticoid and pulse uh, cyclophosphamide, IV cyclophosphamide, usually lower doses IV cyclophosphamide, or glucocorticoid plus MMF, that is mycophenolate morphetin. These, either of these two can be chosen at any time for the treatment of lupus nephritis class 3, 4, and 5 less preferred therapy. I am not going into the details. The calcineurin inhibitor such as tacrolimus, uh, I have told the name. Tacrolimus, it has been tried for several times in a multi-targeted therapy. The multi-targeted therapy that is the calci uh, uh, the uh, is, is better than the IV cyclophosphamide. And very recently published Tacrolimus as initially, it has been published two or three months back this year. It has been shown that uh, the tacrolimus, it compares with IV cyclophosphamide, is almost similar. It appears to be the difference is more, but this is not statistically significant. So this is almost, it was published in JAMA Network very recently, about two or three months back. Lupus nephritis assessment with rituximab, the lunar study, this was a failure study because this uh, 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 rituximab was added to the usual treatment of uh, MMF, but the differences in both the groups are not similar. So MMF, uh, so the rituximab, there is no sufficient data to use as the initial therapy. But in some cases, uh, rituximab is being used with other drugs as a resistant cases or treatment failure cases. I'm not going into the abatacept because it is not effective. Maintenance treatment. Uh, up to 50% of patients with proliferative nephritis following reduction uh, of the therapy, they went into the, 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 the relapse. The relapse rates ranges from 5 to 15% uh, per 100 patients year with the average of approximately 8 per 100 patients. Thus, once a patient has admitted, attained a complete or partial response, immunosuppression is continued to maintain and response uh, uh, and decrease the risk of developing end-stage renal disease. So continuation or maintenance treatment is very much needed. Glucocorticoid maintenance, there is about the duration and dose, there is much controversy. I am not going into the details. These are some studies that has been shown that the continuation of maintenance dose is needed, uh, definitely. And immunosuppressive maintenance, anti-inflammatory maintenance and immunosuppressive maintenance. You see which one, as a theoprene or MMF? Yes, both is equally effective in maintained child. It has been shown both are equally effective in uh, uh, maintaining the remission of the disease. Uh, it is important that the maintenance should be continued with lower doses of prednisolone. It's very important. Uh, again, is important. 
the IV cyclophosphamide. Once upon a time, IV cyclophosphamide were given every month for around uh, one and a half years to two years. So th they compared this IV cyclophosphamide maintenance with this mycophenolate and azathioprine. So these are the better than uh, IV cyclophosphamide maintenance treatment. But maintenance is very important. So maintain shall the follow up. It, it was continued for five years. Again, the very recently published one article that lefronomide might be effective as a maintenance treatment and which is equally effective as azathioprine. How long the maintenance treatment should be given? There is no, no such consensus, but usually around three years. But all the trials, it has been shown that it's three to three, uh, uh, 12 months to 36 months. But in some cases, depending on the case merit and the experience of the individual treating physician, it may be for a longer duration of time. I am now going to uh, have some Bangladesh experiences. Uh, we, in our team, we are maintaining a lupus uh, uh, clinic and we are uh, treating lupus nephritis very regularly. In our, uh, this is the patterns of organ involvement and outcomes in SLE patients. It was just published in our local journal. Uh, in renal, uh, the outcome were, were very good with the uh, treatment according to the international guidelines. Uh, Voclosporin, a novel cancellurin inhibitor, a phase two lupus nephritis study. We, our team was involved in this study and it has been published in 2018 in a journal of kidney uh, and transplant. And uh, this is Aura LV study and ulti ultimately there were phase three uh, trial and these voclosporin are uh, 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 approved by FDA for the treatment of lupus nephritis. In some cases, the resistant cases of lupus nephritis. It is the lower doses which is more effective than the higher doses. And we, the Bangladeshi team, provide around 45 patients to this study. Another uh, is ongoing study. Just I am uh, sharing the, these uh, as a, uh, uh, just on the middle of our study, is cyclophosphamide versus, it's a retrospective study around uh, uh, the, the, just I am going into the, into the, into the results, cyclophosphamide and mofetil. Uh, in our uh, experience, the overall remission is equal in both mycophenolate mofetil and cyclophosphamide. There are no superiority to any group and complete remission and partial remission, all are uh, equally effective. There are two deaths, uh, uh, one in uh, cyclophosphamide group and one in uh, mycophenolate mofetil group. So this is uh, my experience and our team's experience in Bangladesh. So Mr. Chairman, sirs, in conclusion, I would like to say that for patients with class three or class four, uh, lupus nephritis, mycophenolate mofetil two to three gram or low dose intravenous cyclophosphamide, uh, 500 milligram every two weeks for a total of six dose uh, with pulsed glucocorticoids. Combination of MMF with calcineurin inhibitor is an alternative, particularly in nephrotic range proteinuria. To reduce cumulative glucocorticoid dose, the use of intravenous pulses, methylprednisolone followed by oral prednisolone for a, up to a four weeks tapered less than 0 0.7, 0 0.5 milligram for up to six months. So if improvement after initial treatment is achieved, Subsequent immunosuppression is recommended with either MMF or with uh, uh, low dose prednisolone or azathioprine with low dose prednisolone. So, Mr. Chairman, sir, thank you very much. Thank you, dear audience, for your patience hearing.